as many of you know, we've been working on an exciting rebranding project for Kirkland's, and I've been fortunate enough to be part of the team. The language that was used in the SOW, though, was positioning. We were hired to position Kirkland's. So I used this red bit to learn a little more about brand positioning, and today I'm going to share just some of what I learned. So what is it, the definition and history of positioning? To this day, it's a pretty confusing concept, and there are almost as many definitions as there are writers on the subject. It's become a marketing buzzword, something we all talk about, but one we have a lot of trouble defining. There are various definitions from famous marketing theorists and strategists up here, which you can read. But ultimately, positioning is the act of creating a place or a position for a brand to occupy in the consumer's mind relative to other brands. A category that's always been known for its heavy focus on advertising cars illustrates the concept of positioning, I think, better than any definition can. Volvo owns the position of safety, BMW owns driving, and Jeep owns adventure or freedom and exploration. These are strong brands because, with some exceptions, they've worked hard to own these positions in the minds of consumers over and over again um, over a long period of time. That's brand positioning. The history of it, though, is almost as confusing as the definitions. Al Reese and Jack, Jack Trout are often credited with developing the concept of brand positioning in the 1960s. They became famous with the 1972 series of articles on positioning and ad age, which they dramatically titled The Positioning Era Cometh. They also expanded upon the idea in a 1981 book called Positioning the Battle of the Mind. This is a book that's often been named one of the best business and marketing books of all time. It's very influential. A lot of people say that David Ogilvy actually came up with the idea of positioning. He was talking about it in the 1950s, a decade before these guys published their articles. But um, regardless of who should get the credit, Reese and Trout's works really made positioning go viral. They branded it, popularized it, some criticized it, some praised it, but it's a concept still being talked about, written about, and extensively studied today. So why should we really care about brand positioning? Overall, positioning represented a dramatic shift in how we think about brand strategy, and it's still influencing kind of how we approach brand strategy in general today. And it did that in three main ways. First, it directly addressed a huge problem advertising was struggling with around the time that recent trout popularized this idea. And it's one that we're stu still dealing with today, and that's clutter. So recent trout wrote, in our overcommunicated society, the paradox is that nothing is more important than communication. Positioning was presented as a way to communicate in a more focused and thus effective way, breaking through the clutter to be more meaningful to consumers and thus financially successful, which is the ultimate goal of brands, of course. Second, it made positioning and advertising more important to corporate execs. So it, it basically elevated the importance of our craft, which is, of course, a good thing. And it emphasized that branding and business strategy cannot be developed separately. The two have to support each other always. They must be consistent, moving in the same direction, and informing each other. So they really raised the importance of brand strategy to the level of business strategy, whereas before it was kind of secondary. And lastly, it was one of the first strategies to formally focus on the mind of the consumer. It transformed advertising into a true communications medium and convinced all of us that understanding human behavior was essential to communicating effectively. Otherwise, we were just wasting time and money putting out messages that no one would ever really hear. So this all sounds great, but how do we do it? Positioning analysis. How do we position brands? So positioning is, is really threefold. Um, it's all about, one, identifying a brand's ideal position in the consumer's mind. Two, molding perceptions so as to occupy that position. And three, vigilantly defending that position, which is often the most um, difficult part. And this giant task can really be boiled down into this concrete end goal, a positioning statement. A lot of you may have seen this. It's featured in our brand platform that we use here at Red Pepper. But basically, it follows this basic formula. For target consumer, our brand is the category that point of difference. 
So an example we like to use is, is Harley Davidson's positioning statement. For macho guys and macho wannabes who want to join a gang of rebels in an era of decreasing personal freedom, Harley Davidson is the only motorcycle manufacturer that makes big, loud motorcycles. So you can see how there's not just demographic and functional information, concrete attributes of the, the brand. There's some psychological insights, um, some image kind of based things in that positioning statement. So you can be creative within that structured formula. But we do that through kind of four main steps. The first is research. Strategy always starts with research. And here at Red Pepper, we use the three C's framework to really frame that. So that's company, competition, and consumer. Second, based on all of our understanding of that, perceptual mapping. How can we begin to really identify the desired brand position based on what we've learned? And this is a tool that can kind of help us do that. There are lots of specific perceptual mapping tools. People make a lot of money developing like the newest perceptual mapping approach. Um, but basically, it's just an idea and a tool to represent con consumer perceptions of brands in a category in a two-dimensional space. and allows us to see where our own brand is positioned in consumers' minds as it relates to other brands. And it help us, helps us to identify potential white space that we could fill to um, establish a better position. Third is simply critical thinking. This is the hardest and messiest step. And fourth is actually writing that positioning statement. And as I mentioned, it, um, we do this very collaboratively with a client, and it's often featured um, as an important part of our brand platform. So criticism, what the haters say. We've got to talk about the haters because there are definitely some loud ones on this subject, and they make some really good points. So three things. First, um, the critics say positioning is nothing new. A lot of people claim that brand positioning was presented as this dr dramatically groundbreaking, earth-shattering idea, but it, it really isn't that at all. It's not even a new idea. Um, Reese and Trout, these critics say, simply branded the idea of branding by another name. Branding has really always been about positioning focusing on something specific to stand for and emphasize in order to resonate with consumers. Second, positioning is too anti-creativity, anti-creatives, and anti-agency. Creatives at first hated the idea of positioning because they felt it really attacked and devalued their work, and in many ways, they're right. So Reese and Trout wrote, again, very dramatically, um, creativity is dead. Today, it has become obvious that advertising is entering a new era where creativity is no longer the key to success. The name of the marketing game in the 70s is positioning. Strategy is now king. So I think an unfortunate consequence of how the authors presented positioning has been for strategists and creatives to really see each other as enemies stepping on each other's territory. I don't think that was their original intention. It was that strategy and creativity are both equally important, but they presented it in a way that um, was very polarizing to creatives. Lastly, and the, this is the most damning criticism of positioning, but it's one that the branding community still debates today, and that's, you know, positioning sought to provide a remedy to the difficulties of modern advertising, of communicating to consumers in an over-communicated world. It made a great point that positioning was necessary, but its early proponents did not do a great job at explaining how. A lot of subsequent writing on the subject of positioning has been focused on that. And ultimately, kind of no matter how much is written on the subject, positioning is still really, really hard. The problem is only becoming more difficult, and no one has an easy answer for how to solve it. So some final thoughts as we wrap this up. Um, in many ways, I personally believe that the critics are right. Positioning is branding. It represents an incredibly simple but also incredibly powerful idea that our brand should mean something specific in the minds of consumers. And what is meaningful is a focused idea that's relevant, credible, and unique. But it also has limitations. Positioning is just the tip of that marketing. Fear. 
Like us, brands are really complex beings. A positioning statement cannot capture the essence of a brand perfectly.